Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much and welcome for joining us in this side event, which has been organized by the Permanent Mission of the Arab Republic of Egypt. And we are very glad to welcome in our midst the um, Minister, Her Excellency Dr. Ghada Wali, Minister of Social Solidarity of Egypt. We have with us on the panel um, Ms. Halka, representing the Director General of the IOM, Ambassador Ken Okinawa, Deputy Permanent Representative of the Mission of Japan, and last but not least, Ms. Basma El Said, as a representative of the World Youth Forum. So welcome to all the uh, panelists at the high table and to yourselves. Today we are going to have this discussion on the African Youth and Sustainable Development. As we are all aware, we've had for several years now an, a focus and an emphasis on the importance of youth particularly in Africa, because we are an extremely youthful continent. As the moderator for this afternoon session, I wish to share with you also some of the um, programs that the African Union and the member states of the African Union have also embarked upon to address the challenges that our youth are facing these days. Um, I am assuming that you've all had um, the opportunity of looking at the concept note, which was circulated, and it quite correctly identifies a number of key challenges. Now, if we look at Africa's Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, aspiration six states, an Africa whose development is people-driven, relying on the potential of African people, especially its women and youth, and caring for children. The AU has developed several youth development policies and programs at continental level aimed at ensuring that the continent benefits from its demographic dividend. The policies include the African Youth Charter, the Youth Decade Plan of Action, and the Malabo Decision on Youth Empowerment, all of which are implemented through various African Union Agenda 2063 programs. The African Youth Charter protects young people from discrimination and ensures freedom of movement, speech, association, religion, ownership of property, and other human rights while committing to promoting youth participation throughout society. The Youth Decade Plan of Action focuses on five key priority areas, education and skills development, youth employment and entrepreneurship, governance, peace and security, youth health and re sexual reproductive health rights, agriculture, climate change, and the environment. The Malabo Declaration on Creating Employment for Accelerating Youth Development and Employment for Sustainable Development commits AU members to create safe, decent, and competitive employment opportunities. I might add that the African Union also has a youth volunteer corps as a continental development program which recruits youth volunteers to work in all 54 countries across Africa. In November last year, the chairperson of the African Union Commission, 
uh, His Excellency Musa Faki Muhammad appointed Ms. Aya Chebi as the special envoy on youth with a mandate to serve as a representative of and advocate for the voices and interests of African youth to the relevant African Union decision-making bodies advocating for implementation of the African Youth Charter, the Demographic Dividend Roadmap, and Agenda 2063. Having mentioned in brief what the African Union is doing in this regard, it is my pleasure to invite Her Excellency, Dr. Gada Wali, to share with us what the Arab Republic of Egypt is doing in this regard and how we are looking at addressing some of the challenges. Thank you very much, Minister. The floor is yours. Thank you, Ambassador. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished ambassadors and delegates, dear friends, it is my great pleasure to participate in this side event on African youth and sustainable development, a topic which we already touched upon briefly in this morning's session. Like the rest of Africa, Egypt boasts a youth population that exceeds 50% of the country's total population, making it one of the most youthful countries in the world. And also like the rest of Africa, Egypt is heavily invested in empowering its youth and giving them the tools to create a better tomorrow. There's no doubt that lack of quality education, inadequate investment, and lack of economic opportunities are among the most important drivers that compel young people to leave their homes and search for prosperity elsewhere. Studies have shown that the main driver for migration among African youth is indeed the lack of employment opportunities followed by the quest for education. As the vast majority of migrants from and within Africa are aged between 16 and 34, it is absolutely essential to empower young people to fully participate in their societies. It is also essential to guarantee that young people migrate in conditions of freedom, dignity, and safety, allowing them to contribute to economic and social development both within their countries of origin and in the countries of destination. The Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration, GCM, which is strongly rooted in the SDGs, recognizes this reality and establishes as one of its aims to mitigate the adverse drivers of structural factors that hinder people from building and maintaining sustainable livelihoods in their countries of origin, and so compel them to seek a future elsewhere. The GCM, therefore, recognizes that without investing in sustainable development and creating opportunities in countries of origin, people, and especially youth, will continue to move out of desperation rather than choice. Investing in achieving the SDGs is also necessary to unleash the full potential of youth to achieve sustainable development and harness the benefits of migration for all. Objective two of the GCM spells out a commitment to implement Agenda 2030, echoing in part SDG 8, which calls for, among other things, the promotion of development-oriented policies to support decent job creation and entrepreneurship, as well as encourage the formalization and growth of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, including through access to financial services and financial inclusion. Objective two of GCM also echoes SDG 4 on inclusive education for all, calling for the development of human capital through increased investment in education, vocational training, and skills development programs and partnerships with a view to reducing youth unemployment and avoiding brain drain. We must work on endowing our youth with labor market relevant skills and ensure equal opportunities for young women and men. And here I really need to uh, explain uh, that Egypt has embarked on a massive reform of its educational system, both regular education and vocational education. Uh, it's a new reform that is moving us in the new era and taking us in the future and equipping our youth with the, the state-of-the-art knowledge and skills that they need. Uh, it equally reflects SDG 4 on poverty eradication, central to which is the scaling up of social protection programs in order to leave no one behind. 
These same goals and values are reflected in the African Union's Agenda 2063, which seeks to achieve Africa's structural transformation in the social, economic, environmental, and technological fields. Ladies and gentlemen, central to achieving the objectives of Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2063 is the sharing of best practices and lessons learned between African countries and strengthening international cooperation and partnerships in line with the spirit of the GCM. It is within this context that I would like to share Egypt's experience in the area of social and economic development with particular focus on the empowerment of youth. This morning, I mentioned Egypt's initiatives in the area of youth engagement, a topic that will be addressed in more detail by other speakers on this panel. In the area of economic and social reform, Egypt has embarked on an ambitious reform program that includes a number of development initiatives. Egypt's 2030 vision seeks to achieve inclusive economic and social development in line with Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2063 through the four pillars of economic development, social justice, environment, and knowledge and innovation. In the area of employment generation, Egypt is working tirelessly to create more jobs and better jobs. A comprehensive economic reform program and employment generation strategy has led to a sharp drop in the unemployment rate to 7.5%. This is the lowest rate since 20, 2003. Realizing the centrality of private sector job creation for the country's future, Egypt has endeavored in cooperation with the international partners, such as the World Bank, to create a business environment that is conducive to private sector development. Economic empowerment of youth also requires planning ahead to harness the potential of new technologies as a driver of development. In the area of innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship, Egypt established the first regional center for entrepreneurship with the aim of providing support for startups and skills training for young people. It also established the Fekretak Shirketak, Idea is Your Company, incubation center, providing support and training for young entrepreneurs. Simultaneously, in order to make sure that job growth can keep up with the growing working age population, Egypt is working on providing access to finance for its young people to establish micro, small, and medium enterprises, recognized worldwide as a principal engine for economic growth. Today, MSMEs generate almost 75% of employment in the private sector. Through a number of partners, such as the International Labour Organization, Egypt is bringing such access to finance to a number of governorates, including to rural economy, in order to make sure that no one is left behind. In another endeavor to leave no one behind, the Ministry of Social Solidarity launched the Takeful and Karama programs. It's a conditional cash transfer program, which was launched in 2015 to support the country's extreme poor, address inequalities between rural and urban areas, and assist the most vulnerable through providing cash transfer to approximately 2.2 million Egyptian families. In those 2.2 million Egyptian families, there are 9 million individuals. And this is added to the previous number of a million individuals already receiving cash transfer. So the total number of families receiving cash transfers in Egypt is 3.2 million Egyptian families below the poverty line. Ladies and gentlemen, the other side of the coin is the complex and multifaceted relationship between migration and sustainable development, is the recognition of the development benefits of youth migration. Egypt has been a strong advocate of the need for a holistic and comprehensive approach to migration that views it as a positive phenomenon which can contribute to international development. However, harnessing such benefits and opportunities for youth requires robust evidence-based migration policies and the creation of regular pathways that ensure safe, decent, and orderly migration. SDG Target 10.7 recognizes the need for comprehensive policy frameworks that promote regular and decent migration and thus leverage its positive development impact for all. Migration, migrant youth can introduce important benefits to their countries of destination, such as skills, labor, investment, and cultural diversity. Simultaneously, they significantly benefit their countries of origin through the transfer of knowledge, skills, and financial resources. In order to be able to harness the potential of youth to implement the SDGs in Africa, a number of challenges need to be addressed. Implementing the SDGs require the provision of adequate resources, including through ODA, FDI, public and private resources. 
there's also a need to reduce the transaction costs of migrant remittances in line of Agenda 2030 and expand scholarships available to African countries. We must do more to encourage partnership between stakeholders to respond to various challenges confronting development in Africa, such as peace and security, trade obstacles, and the impacts of climate change. African development also requires the provision of technical and financial assistance to African countries to help them create holistic legal and political migration management systems. One major partner for both Egypt and the broader African continent has been Japan, which has invested in education, infrastructure, economic and social development, as the recent Tokyo International Conference on African Development has recently showed. We hope the same good practices can be emulated by other international partners to upscale development efforts in Africa. There's also a need to build upon and adequately implement existing frameworks such as the Joint Valletta Action Plan launched by the EU and AU heads of state in 2015. Under the Action Plan, the leaders made commitments in five pillars, namely the development aspects of migration and addressing root causes including economic development, promoting regular pathways for migration, return and reintegration of migrants, combating trafficking and irregular migration, protection and asylum. It is absolutely necessary to implement the Valletta Action Plan in a comprehensive manner that gives equal weight to all five domains. Africa also needs to forge increased international partnerships and capitalize on existing frameworks to better manage migration. The Global Compact for Migration and its associated capacity building mechanism and multi-partner trust fund is an important development in this regard. It must be implemented with due regard to the 360 degree approach and with equal importance given to the five cluster areas of promoting an evidence-based migration discourse, protecting the safety of migrants, combating irregular migration, facilitating regular migration and improving integration of migrants. Migration management requires a whole of society and a whole of government approach that brings together different stakeholders in order to make sure it acts as a transformative force for societies to achieve sustainable development. Mr. Moderator and colleagues uh, on the panel, I wished to continue and spend the rest of the session with you. I was very keen to attend and be with you today. Uh, however, I have a plane that I have to catch, so I will be keeping an eye on His Excellency, the Ambassador in Egypt, so whenever given the instructions to leave, I will have to excuse myself. Thank you very much, and I wish you a very successful discussion. Thank you very much indeed, Honorable Minister. <clears throat> As you were delivering your, your statement, it struck me as to how many other countries in Africa have similar approaches because it applies to almost all of us on the continent. And if we all pursue this matter with a great amount of vigor and determination, we can make a difference in the lives of our youth. You have touched upon a lot of very critical factors in your address. and. Uh, I think we will be able to hear from our colleague, Ambassador Okinawa, what uh, his perspective would be coming from uh, a partner country to Africa, uh, attempting to assist us out of this predicament we have. But let me uh, reassure you that uh, Ambassador Yusuf is a very influential person. He can delay planes from departing from Geneva if the need arises. <laughs> so we leave it in his hands. <laughs> Ambassador Okinawa, if you would, please. Uh, thank you, Ambassador Brandeo. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Minister Wali for uh, her uh, kind words to Japan and also for hosting uh, this uh, event, which is very important. Uh, distinguished delegates, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Japan hosted uh, the seventh meeting of uh, Tokyo International Conference on African Development, TICAD 7, in end of August this year. Uh, the meeting was uh, uh, attended uh, or co-chaired by uh, President El Sisi of Egypt uh, as chair of AU and also Prime Minister Abe of Japan 
with the attendance of uh, 53 countries, including 42 heads of state from uh, African continent. The theme of the, of the meeting was advancing Africa's development through people, technology, and innovation. And so all these uh, elements are related to today's uh, event. Uh, the declaration adopted at the meeting uh, stressed the importance of private sector development, digital transformation, youth and women entrepreneurship. Uh, it also uh, uh, mentioned how to deal with uh, irregular migration. The linkages between the private sector, connectivity, technology, and innovation was also mentioned uh, because technology, most of the technology is uh, uh, used uh, in the uh, se private sector for generating growth. It also committed to education at all stages, and uh, I do feel that the uh, education is uh, not only for a certain uh, age, uh, people at a certain age, but I think for all stages as they are, uh, uh, and also for uh, people who are at a later stage in life. Uh, the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics uh, were identified as key driver for achieving AU Agenda 2063 and SDGs. And I do think uh, Egypt is uh, taking the same approach to uh, uh, tackling uh, this challenge. Um, if, you, if you need to leave, Minister, you know, I hope I'm not <laughs> keeping you from going to the airport. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just continue, if I may. Um, regarding uh, the migration and uh, displaced persons, uh, the declaration supported a long-term development approach and durable solutions to strengthen the self-reliance and res resilience of displaced population and also host communities. This is an approach that we uh, fully support uh, because that durable solutions is not only, I guess, uh, one-time support to these people that the this, the vulnerable uh, uh, displaced population, also co host communities, need to be equipped or empowered to be able to uh, uh, lead uh, a self-reliance uh, and also livelihoods, and so that they are able to make uh, decisions for themselves. Uh, one project that Japan funded uh, recently uh, uh, in Sierra Leone is the IOM project, uh, which uh, aims at reducing uh, the risk of irregular migration through employment promotion and entrepreneurship support for the young people. Uh, we supported uh, the young people who came, I guess, from the rural areas to find work in the cities, but there, are, there is a high rate of uh, unemployment. Uh, the project uh, provides uh, training to such young people and the uh, juice manufacturing company in the capital uh, and also provide uh, business skills training uh, as well as to educate them about the dangers of human trafficking. Uh, we hope that the uh, two, more than 2,000 people who will be trained through this uh, project will be able to be self-reliant, possibly start a new business, and find better lives uh, in, uh, uh, in wherever they are. Aside from the, uh, m well, uh, this kind of uh, uh, international organization projects that we fund, at uh, TICAD 7, uh, Japan announced the uh, strengthening of the existing initiative for the youth. Uh, it's called the African Business Education Initiative for Youth, uh, and the abbreviation is ABE Initiative, which happens to be, ABE happens to be the name of our Prime Minister uh, for short. Um, this is a uh, very unique initiative uh, in which uh, African uh, young people are uh, accepted to Japanese uh, graduate schools for uh, technical uh, edu I mean education and mostly in technology related areas. 
and they also do interns at Japanese companies which already have some kind of uh, business with Africa. Through this uh, program, the African youth uh, learn the, not only the technology and know-how, but also the work ethics in Japan and the business culture in Japan. Uh, and uh, through this, uh, they also, uh, uh, I think, if they would like, if they want, they uh, are also uh, uh, introduced to Japanese companies who uh, are encouraged to uh, employ them in their operations uh, in Africa. Uh, the interesting thing is that. Uh, the intern, through the internship and the uh, studies, they are able to, uh, I guess, find uh, uh, skills and uh, solutions to the problems that Africa faces today, uh, such as a uh, waste management in which uh, the Japanese company is investing in a high temperature incinerator in uh, Kenya and the Kenyan youth was learning about how the uh, high temperature incinerator and waste management can solve environmental problems in the country. Uh, we also have, uh, for example, a program on uh, education on using satellite uh, imagery and also geographical information systems to uh, anticipate uh, the drought and uh, floods or promote agriculture and uh, also exploration of uh, natural resources on the ground. Uh, Japan uh, pledged to uh, uh, implement uh, th uh, training for 3,000 people in the next six years. We have already uh, accepted uh, 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 quite a few in the, during the last uh, six years under this initiative. Um, another thing that we, another initiative that I like to mention is that we are pledged to train 140,000 uh, uh, people, I think mostly young people, to, uh, uh, to provide high level engineering uh, education through the uh, schools that we have supported in Africa. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, finish by mentioning that uh, we also have an initiative to promote science and uh, mathematics uh, education in Africa. Uh, from 2016 to 2019, we are uh, training uh, 20,000 teachers for mathematics and science. Um, the, in this science and technology area, uh, Egypt and Japan is uh, have a uh, sim uh, cooperating in the Egypt Japan University of Science and Technology, uh, which is based in Cairo and Alexandria. Uh, we have trained 5,000 highly skilled people in science and technology, including uh, artificial uh, intelligence. And I think this kind of activity shows that. Uh, Africa uh, can uh, take advantage of the innovative technology that is uh, available so that they do not have to, uh, uh, I think they can be uh, competing uh, with the other countries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving us that uh, succinct overview and synopsis of how the partnership between Africa and Japan is working to empower the youth. Um, certainly, um, it's music to our ears because in 2017, it may be recalled that the African Union theme for the year was harnessing the demographic dividend through investment in youth. And so we all appreciate the value of our youth, the change that they can bring about, and what we need to um, facilitate their entry into mainstream, mainstream economy, um, into society, uh, to create for them the space where they can move in and make a difference to society and take us forward as the future leaders. Having said that, I shall now call upon 
Ms. Basma Al Said, as a representative of the youth, to share with us the youth's perspective on some of these very critical issues. Thank you very much, and thanks to IOM for giving us the space to speak uh, today. Uh, I'm uh, Basma, I'm representing the World Youth Forum. Um, let me first give you a, a quick brief about the World Youth Forum before taking you to our, how the World Youth Forum is contributing to uh, African Youth and Sustainable Development, which is the title of our session today. So first, um, back in 2016, uh, President uh, Sisi uh, had a vision of uh, empowering youth and giving us the chance to um, explore and to give us the tools uh, to be present better in our country. So he announced 2016 as the year of youth and uh, launched the first presidential leadership program, which I'm personally a graduate of the first batch of that program. The program basically uh, was there to give us skills over the course of nine months uh, with a lot of side activities that included us visiting the parliament, visiting different uh, ministries and getting um, an insight of what's really happening inside the government. Um, and through the PLP was the ideation and the boring of the youth conferences, uh, which like, I think we, we have more than 10 conferences that happened uh, since 2016. Um, and we, as a group of young graduates uh, of the Presidential Leadership Program, the first batch, came up with the idea of having an international conference where youth from around the world can come to Egypt and we can discuss and come up with ideas of how we can make our countries better and how we can contribute to our countries. Uh, and that was when th we first had the first World Youth Forum back in 2017. Um, we had a lot of people, young people coming from all over the world and we found that we have established a very good network, a very strong network with a lot of nationalities, a lot of uh, young people from the age range of 18 to 30 years old. And in after the conference in 2017, we found out that a lot of people met in the conference and they started up their own startups or projects, which is, means that they got to meet through the World Youth Forum and that's how they got to meet, know each other. And they actually started having their own businesses through the World Youth Forum network. So in 2018, we wanted to shed light more on the ecosystem of startups and how uh, the, the, not only Egypt, but the region is focusing a lot about st on startups and they know that the, it's a solution or it's a key to a better economic system uh, in, in the region. So we, start up some, we started something called the Startup Vein, which was basically um, a stage for startups and good case practices to come and tell us their stories and how they overcome different challenges that startups face around the world, not only in Egypt or not only in Africa. And we had a lot of startups come and showcase their projects. And it was actually a huge success to the extent that at the end of the conference, the president announced that he asked the World Youth Forum as an entity to start building and establishing a regional hub to support startups. And that's how we got the idea of the World Youth Forum Labs. And it was announced uh, in March 2019 uh, we started the World Youth Forum Labs and we had what we started by supporting the first startup. Um, it's an application that is more of trying to be a, a better or a more advanced version of LinkedIn. Um, so we started the World Youth Forum Labs and basically it's um, a, start, a startups hub uh, for, for all start supporting all startups from around the world. Uh, we try to connect youth to youth. As mentioned, we have a huge network, so youth who have different ideas and can work together, so we connect youth to youth. We connect youth to government, and that's our edge because we have a huge support from the government and, the, from, and from the president. So we try to overcome the challenges that, you, that startups face uh, uh, by, by giving them the opportunity to talk to the different ministries, for example. And we connect youth to investors 
So we, uh, we, we will be holding, like for example, at the end of this year with the Third World Youth Forum, we're going to be ha holding different networking sessions to allow the startups to get to meet investors and potential VCs, for example. And finally, we connect youth to uh, the government. I mentioned the government, youth to funding as well. So if they have the option to get to meet with different banks, for instance, that have different uh, supporting uh, programs for startups, they, we offer them the network to connect through that. Um, not only that, we like talking about our topic uh, here in the session on African youth. So for example, we also had the African PLP or the African Presidential Leadership Program, which is a version of the PLP, but specifically focusing on African uh, nations. We had one uh, gra uh, batch graduated already from that program. It's basically giving them the skills to be able to be um, better like government leaders or work within their governments better. Um, if we talk about migration and creating jobs, uh, when we always, when we talk about migration and how to, uh, to have, to control or harness inter irregular migration, it's basically give youth good job, job opportunities or give them the space to create their own uh, self-employment opportunities and they'll be satisfied where they are and they won't move out of their countries. So basically creating job opportunities that would result in a decent life making migration to youth an option and not a necessity. Uh, so this will also help on the long run achieving uh, Af the development of African nations as well as achieving the 2063 agenda of uh, Africa, the African Union. Uh, so that is basically what the World Youth Forum does, what WIF Labs aim to do, and we would be happy to, to uh, answer any questions later on after we finish, if you have, thank you. Thank you very much, Basma. We are heartened when we hear the youth being so constructive and uh, forward-looking. Of course, the opportunity has to present itself for our youth to then um, seize the opportunity in order to maximize on its benefits. What is clear, and I think all of us can agree with that, is that if our youth are given the skills, the education, the uh, technological know-how, uh, if they are innovative, if they have access to finance, and if they are allowed the space in which to develop, then the last thing on their mind is going to be to leave their country of birth. All youth, I'm assuming, are patriotic. They want to remain in the countries and leave only out of choice. When they are made offers, they cannot refuse, but not in desperation because they have no other choice. And so they choose to, to uh, leave the country of birth, whether it's through regular or irregular means. But sustainable development and the youth is certainly a topic that is going to be with us for a long time to come. And as we still have a few minutes, I would like to open the floor for any observations, comments, contributions, or even questions. I, I know that many of Africa's partners are present in the room, all of whom have been reliable and resourceful in working with Africa on youth development, sustainable development issues. So if any of you would like to take the floor, please feel free to do so. Your Excellency, Libya. Thank you, Your Excellency, and thank you very much for uh, moderating this important session. Um, certainly the presentations are very enlightening, and uh, we would like to thank 
the uh, panelists for their presentations and certainly the role that Japan continues to play as being a positive force to the uh, African challenges. And I congratulate Mrs. Sayed, Basma Sayed, for her um, success and wish her continued success, her and the many thousands of African youth that uh, would be a, a, a thriving force for leading the continent uh, out of the current challenges. I think all we heard is, is uh, great elements that uh, lead to success. Um, coming from Libya, I think you will understand that I would like to share and shed another important element that would be very important to the drivers that you had mentioned, uh, Mr. Moderator, in, in, uh, in the ability for youth to look forward to a positive future. And um, unfortunately, in Libya today, those elements, while they're important, they're the necess necessary pillars for a driving force for a positive future. But there is one other element that regrettably Libyans cannot look forward to this future today because of the instability that we have in Libya. Peace is needed. We must have peace in order to have stability to be able to look forward to affording our youth the chance, like other youth around the world, to thrive and capitalize on these other pillars that you had just mentioned. And we look forward to the world community to be strong enough to take a position for supporting peace in Libya, supporting the stop of war in a country that cannot afford to go through what it's going through today. It's not only affecting Libyans, and since we are here under the IOM emblem, many other thousands of brothers and sisters of Africa that are passing through Libya in seeking their aspirations, whether wherever that may be, and usually that is often the case to be in the northern shores of the Mediterranean. They're also faced with very troubling times under the current war situation in Libya. So I hope that the international community can be a little bit more forceful in standing for peace in Libya and uh, putting a stop to the current um, turmoil that we are enduring. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. I think that call resonates with all of us and uh, it's a very valid and legitimate um, appeal that you make. Um, far too many migrants, far too many youth have had to sacrifice and pay the ultimate price for wars that they did not bring upon themselves. And it's really unfortunate that uh, many of the people who are fleeing today um, are actually um, doing so from conflict. Is there any other request for the floor? Would any of the panelists like to say something additional? Ambassadors? Um, no, thank you, uh, Ambassador. No, I, I just want to say that the, uh, I think education is uh, very important for uh, any country, but for, for Japan, uh, we attach importance to education in any situation. Uh, including humanitarian and also the uh, displaced persons, uh, because we know from our experience and our history that uh, human resources is the most important resource for a country, and then also the youth are the uh, future of our future generations. And uh, this is a very fundamental position that uh, the Japanese government has taken, I think, uh, uh, and it's a point that the Prime Minister uh, always makes. Uh, and uh, and the uh, import this is an important period uh, because it is the young people who are embracing more the new technological change 
and the younger, younger generation are more be better able to absorb uh, technology. And, and so in that sense, I think it's extremely important that the technological uh, innovations and education in such uh, areas are available to the youth. And, and they will provide, uh, and they can come up with uh, solutions for the situation that they're in. And uh, that's why we attach importance to uh, cooperation in the area of uh, innovative technology, accepting uh, young people from Africa, and also uh, trying to promote Japanese company hiring them, and then have activities in Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's not. Um, I think I, I'll just ha have a very small note is that um, we're, we're lucky that we've been, uh, we had a government and a president that believed in youth, so he gave us the chance, as you were saying, if we have a chance and have an opportunity, we will, we will seize that. So once we are given these chances, we definitely will not just let it go, but we'll seize that. And that's what happened with the World Youth Forum. And I completely agree that it starts with education. And even the WIF labs that came from a World Youth Forum came from a, a program that only taught youth some skills. So the, the presidential leadership program. And I honestly believe that entrepreneurship education is extremely important nowadays because none of us, like, and I'm not speaking of all youth, but like a huge percentage of youth do not really want to work in a job or like a normal job. Instead, we want to have our own space to create, uh, to, to, to innovate. So self-employment is something that I think we should really encourage youth to, to, to have and to promote better. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Well. I shall safely say that seeing there are no other requests for the floor, that this event um, is drawing to a close. I would like to, on behalf of the mission, the permanent mission of Egypt, who organized the side event, to thank you all for being with us to thank in particular the panelists who were with, the, with us sharing their views and ideas and to say that we shall meet again on another occasion. Thank you very much. <laughs>